Hi, it's Carolyn here. Before you start listening to this episode, I just wanted to let you know that I'm currently in Switzerland doing my very own and long overdue trip around the country. I'm visiting some of the most popular destinations in Switzerland, as well as a number of lesser known places. And I'm traveling around by both car and train. If you'd like to follow along with my Swiss travels to see where I am and what I'm doing, make sure you follow Holidays to Switzerland on Instagram. That's Holidays number two Switzerland. Here I'll be sharing photos and reels as I go, and I'd love you to follow along. Now, settle back and enjoy this episode. Are you dreaming of visiting Switzerland? Planning a trip to Switzerland is very exciting, but it can also be overwhelming. How do you choose which of the many scenic cities, towns and villages to visit? Which mountaintop excursions should you take? And what's the best way to get around Switzerland? And of course, how much of the country can you realistically see within your time frame? If you've asked yourself any of these questions, this is the podcast for you. This is the Holidays to Switzerland travel podcast, and in each episode, your host, Carolyn Schonefinger, chats with Swiss travel experts to answer your most commonly asked questions, provide practical tips, and take you on a virtual visit to the most popular destinations, and of course, some hidden gems to help you plan your dream trip to Switzerland. And you'll hear plenty of conversations about Swiss cheese and chocolate too. Are you ready to plan your trip to Switzerland? Well, let's get started. Hi there and welcome to episode 43. This is an episode I've been looking forward to recording for a long time as it combines two of my great loves, Switzerland and chocolate. Switzerland has a long chocolate making history and is renowned for producing some of the best, if not the best, chocolate in the world. So it's not surprising then that eating Swiss chocolate is right up there at the top of most people's must-do lists when they visit Switzerland. Of course, you can buy Swiss chocolate at the supermarket and at souvenir stores when you're in Switzerland, but for a really immersive experience and to learn more about Swiss chocolate, visiting a factory or taking part in a chocolate-making workshop is a fun thing to do. In today's episode, we're going on a virtual chocolate tasting tour to three different places where you can learn more about the history of Swiss chocolate, watch it being made, make your own chocolate in a workshop, and eat chocolate to your heart's content. First up, I'm chatting to Sandy Bolland from Funky Chocolate Club in Interlaken. Then we'll hear from Caroline de Rungs of Chocolarium in Flawell before Kai Speer from Lint Home of Chocolate joins us. If you'd love to go on a chocolate tasting tour, you need Switzerland. Thank you, as always, to the sponsors of the podcast, Switzerland Tourism. Visit their website, myswitzerland.com, for travel information and inspiration. And thank you too for joining me today. I hope you enjoy all the chocolatey goodness in today's episode. Now, let's hear what fun awaits us at Funky Chocolate Club in Interlaken. Thank you for coming on the podcast, Sandy. It's uh, great that you're able to join us today and I'm really looking forward to learning more about Funky Chocolate Club. Thank you, thanks for inviting us. Can you start by telling us how Funky Chocolate Club came about? Yes, a good friend of mine, Tatiana, um, she's from the Czech Republic. She started in 2014. She had this idea about how to be able to offer the public the opportunity to play with chocolate, work with chocolate, that kind of thing. So um, at the time, there wasn't very many opportunities people could go to these big factories and actually do the tastings and stuff but they couldn't really work with chocolate so um she started the funky chocolate club where she was offering these workshops and um so people can just book like any activity and we show we show them how to first we explain a little bit about where chocolate comes from how it's made their origins that kind of thing the sustainability is a very important factor for us as well and then we do a tasting. So everybody gets to taste the chocolate, starting with 100% pure chocolate down to white chocolate. We explain a little bit about the different uh, ingredients in the chocolate. 
and then we show them how to temper chocolate and then they can make their own chocolate bars. Okay. So it just gives the public the, the opportunity to actually work with chocolate, which you don't get very often. No, for sure. And what's yeah. your role in the business? Well, I actually, Tatiana is married to a Kiwi. I'm married to a Kiwi. <laughs> and last year we both happened to be in New Zealand um, in January and her and her husband decided not to come back due to the COVID situation and um, the difficulties attached to it because they have triplets as well, which mm. were only two years old. So it was all very hard for them. Um, so, yeah, we, we discussed it and we felt it would be a shame for that whole opportunity to go astray and not to be continued. And um, she she was happy to let us take over and continue with the with the business. So, yeah, that was kind of my role in it. So now I'm. You're running the show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, no, it's a it's a fun thing. But I've been in in the restaurant industry for a while. My husband and I have another have a couple of restaurants as well. Um, but the whole chocolate thing and working with chocolate really interests me, and it was a great opportunity to get into it and yeah, to be able to take over the business from her. Which I'm sure uh, she was very grateful, and and so are all the the visitors to Interlark, and I'm sure they're very <laughs> grateful too because they've still got the opportunity. To, to come and visit you. So what's unique about Funky Chocolate Club compared to some of the other chocolate shops and, and chocolate producers or factories that people can go and visit in Switzerland? Well, we're not, you know, we're definitely not a factory. We we do make our own pralines and, and make some chocolate products, but um, we're not a factory like the big producers. Um, we've actually just renovated and and revamped a little bit where we now have a cafe as well as the workshops um, and a shop where people can buy chocolate we we really try and um, we only sell products made in Switzerland to start with and we really look into the background of the chocolate producers to make sure that it's or you know in the hopes that it's the sustainable fair trade chocolate trade and that kind of thing um, and then, of course, what makes us exceptionally unique is the fact that we have those workshops um, where people get to play with the chocolate and get to make their own slabs and have fun do- doing it and learn about chocolate at the same time, but don't have to go to a whole course for it. Yeah, OK. So can you tell us a bit more about the workshops, uh, how long they run for, who they're suitable for? You know, can kids join in? Um for those people that are listening and, and thinking about yeah coming along, what, what can they expect? It's a great family activity, actually. We take, um, we take children from the age of four. Um, of course, at that age, we do expect an adult to be part of the workshop as well. But, um, yeah, we take children as young as four. And, and as I say, we start off by explaining about chocolate, where it comes from, the origins, the history behind chocolate. Then we explain how chocolate's made. We go through a tasting where everybody gets to try chocolate from the actual cocoa bean to 100% pure chocolate, which is exceptionally bitter. And then we work our way down to the white chocolate, which is much more, well, it's creamier, white, sweet. It's everything else that the dark chocolate is. <laughs> so, and then we... Um, show people how to temper chocolate and tempering is basically heating up chocolate melting it um, to about 45 degrees and then you you drop the temperature down reheat it and you cool it again so it gets that nice shiny consistency that people know in the in the chocolate bars that they buy in the shops and um, then they temper their own chocolate and they make their own chocolate bars they decorate them they um, yeah, they can do whatever they want to on the actual chocolate bar. We wrap them up, we, we cool them down, we wrap them up, and then they can collect them a little bit later. The workshop goes for about 75 minutes. And then um, for the cooling process and the setting process of the chocolate bars that they've made, 
and to give us a chance to wrap it, they need to wait another 30 to 45 minutes where they can go and do whatever and then pick up the chocolate later on. Yeah, great. I think they might actually get a certificate or something at the end. Is that That's right? That's right. They, get a, <laughs> they do. They get the funky chocolate level one chocolatier certificate <laughs> well that, that's a must-have souvenir from switzerland that's right yeah and and i've i've seen photos too of uh, people who've done the workshops and they're dressed in their their big white hats so it, it's look looks very professional yeah that's right no it's 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 a really fun experience we we may, we bring a lot of fun into it as well because of course it's you know it's it, it is serves a purpose for people to learn the basics about chocolate, but it also needs to stay fun and and be a an activity that they remember when they leave. Yeah, you know, um, so we have a lot of fun through it. We fool around a little bit and make little jokes and stuff. And no, it's it's a really great activity. And as I say, it's it's suitable. We we literally have everyone from four year olds to eighty five year olds coming to do it with. Yeah, with families. Yesterday we actually had a wedding party. Oh, um, wow. come as a surprise, yes. <laughs> so it was a surprise for the groom and the bride. And they came and made chocolate. And yeah, so it's really it's suitable. And we and we adapt it as well. We we can adapt it to, you know, if someone wants a private workshop, we can adapt it to what they want. You know, if they have an event or they want something special. That's that's the nice thing as well. It's they're small. We only take up to twelve people in our workshops, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, it's it's very adaptable and very fun to do. Yeah, great. So for those people that are in Interlaken and, and perhaps don't have time to do a workshop or or don't really want to, can they still come and come to the Funky Chocolate Club and and go to the cafe or the shop? Yes, we have a little cafe. So they can, where we sell various chocolate products and we sell pralines and we also do a lot of really chocolatey desserts. Mm. <laughs> so, um, and we we sell our famous hot chocolate and strawberries with melted chocolate. So mm. there's a lot of things that they can come and enjoy <laughs> as long as it's got to do with chocolate. Yeah. You know, we, we offer it. <laughs> Sounds wonderful. And is is the Funky Chocolate Club open all year round? Um, normally, yes. This year, because of the whole COVID thing and the tourism, we will probably be closed for the month of November. But as of next year, we'll be open all year round again. Okay. And you have um, uh, more than one workshop a day, do you? Or, or is there just the one? Yes. It depends a little on the season. Um, we have up to four workshops a day. Okay. The normal times are 11 to 4 and 6 o'clock. Um, seasonally, we adapt it a little bit depending on how much business is around. Yeah. So, okay. And whereabouts in Interlaken are you located? We're actually slapping in the center of Interlaken. We're in um, the street that we're in is called Postgrasse, um, but it's just off the main street in Interlaken. Uh, right in the center really so it's very easy to get to very easy to find right in the middle between the two train stations we have two train stations in Interlaken Mm -hmm. so we're right in the middle it's about a 10 minute walk from each train station in case someone just comes into town for the day or whatever and should people who are wanting to do a workshop should they book in advance for those yes yes they are booked very quickly um they can book online on our www.funkychocolateclub.com um, we do have a booking page on there and the best is if they book in advance and um, to ensure that they have the space wonderful well I'm sure plenty of our listeners will be certainly looking up your website and, and booking their, <laughs> their spot for a workshop because all those chocolate desserts and and hot chocolate with strawberries you, you've tempted me so I'm sure you've tempted every <laughs> everyone else who's listening as well thank you very much Sandy for um, telling us about Funky Chocolate Club and hopefully we can uh, send lots of lots of people eager chocolate ho- chocoholics to yes. you um, to to sample your wares that's awesome thank you because you can never have too much chocolate absolutely <laughs> Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, Carolyn.
Right. Well, it sounds like I need to factor in time for a visit to Funky Chocolate Club when I'm next in Interlaken. What about you? Is a visit to eastern Switzerland included in your itinerary, perhaps? Because there's another must-visit chocolate destination not far from St. Gallen. I'll leave Caroline to tell you all about it. Welcome to the podcast, Caroline. Thank you very much for joining me today. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> uh, can you start by telling the, the listeners uh, a little bit about the Chocolarium and, and the history behind the company and, and your role with the company? Yes, please. I'd love to. Thank you. Um, our founder was called Aquilino Maestrani, and he was one of the founding fathers of the chocolate culture in Switzerland. He uh, founded our company first, actually, in Lucerne in 1852. Um, he started there because he knew of lots of English tourists, especially visiting Switzerland in those years there. Um, after a while, he did actually relocate to St. Gallen, which is close to where we are now. And uh, he set up his business there, as in those days, St. Gallen was a very prosperous, world-renowned textile capital. So that's why he, again, moved there to get close to where his best customers would be and where, where there uh, was a good economy, a prosperous economy working. Um, he moved around St. Gallen um, for some times until he finally found a big enough um, production site uh, just above of the, the, the main town. Uh, also, that then finally became too small <laughs> and uh, Mastrani was growing over the last uh, decades, including a, a takeover here of a company called Munz in Florian where we are today. So that's why we all moved out here in 2003. And since then, the production and the administration are all together in one place here in Flaville, only 20 minutes from St. Gallen. In 2017, then finally, the uh, Chocolarium, the Chocolate Factory of Happiness opened. So now we can welcome all our customers in our modern chocolate factory. Um, yeah, I'm sure I can tell you something about that in just a minute with more details. Wonderful. And and what's your role with the company? I am head of Chocolarium. So um, me and my team, we look after all our guests visiting us here. We welcome them um, to the discovery tour, to our chocolate shop, to our cafe. We offer chocolate courses. So we uh, we're a big team, always with a happy smile on their face, because, of course, we can eat chocolate the whole day as much as we want. <laughs> and uh, the, the title, Head of Ch head of Chocolarium, that just sounds like yeah. the, the perfect role, doesn't it? The, the perfect job, Head of Chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is for me, actually. <laughs> I love my job, but definitely. <laughs> Very good. Now, I noticed that the tagline for the Chocolarium is the Chocolate Factory of Happiness which just mm -hmm. sounds ideal. And I'm sure that most visitors have a huge smile on their face whilst they are visiting. So what are some of the things that they can see and do at the Chocolarium? Mm -hmm. Well, our founder, Aquilino Maestrani, said once, those who see the world through the eyes of a chocolate lover will find true beauty and happiness. Mm -hmm. So obviously, we really are very happy here and um, we make our customers happy. And um, I love watching um, people coming to us the first time because they start shooting photos from the very beginning. So we are a, a very colorful, light, um, very friendly going, happy chocolarium. When you come in, um, you can decide what to do first. So there's lots of things to do, like probably best go on our discovery tour first because uh, this is the story uh, which we tell, how does the happiness get into the chocolate? So you must come along. You get an introduction in a short um, cinema with a short film, and then uh, people enjoy different rooms uh, in the chocolate museum part where we um, explain where does the cocoa come from, where does the milk come from? Where does the, uh, the sugar come from? Uh, how do we 
uh, mix these best ingredients we get together to make our best doctor product. Um, you will have a direct view into our live production. So you can actually see the machines working. You can see how the chocolate bars get wrapped up. You can see how different chocolate treats are produced and, uh, and wrapped up. I love watching that because uh, you see like all that chocolate running around uh, just beneath your feet. So it's a glass gallery. So um, our, our uh, guests really love watching the original production here. After that, you will get um, to our so-called uh, show confiserie. So a chocolatier is well, or a chocolatier is welcoming you when you get there. And if you like, um, he or she will mold you a fresh bar of chocolate, and you can then decorate that at your heart's content. So um, make your own bar of chocolate is part of our discovery tour. People are happy to visit our chocolate shop because we have over 300 fantastic chocolate products. Of course, we have great Swiss chocolate souvenirs and sweet gift ideas, so people love going there. And also taking a, a sip of coffee. Not a lot of people actually drink a hot chocolate after the Discovery Tour because <laughs> you are able to eat as much chocolate on the tour as you, you can sort of grab off. And um, mostly they have had enough until about one hour you get out. So uh, we have a cute coffee where you can drink coffee or have a sip of mineral water. Um, we do offer chocolate making courses in different kinds. So either you can create your own chocolate bar or create your own chocolate hollow figure. And uh, since a few months, we offer some new walking courses where you can create small chocolate treats. So this is especially something that uh, families love to do because children uh, don't always have uh, enough nerves. Of, well, the adults don't have enough nerves and the children um, get excited if the course goes on for too long. Uh, we call it the, the Shockey Atelier. Um, you will be able to create a small chocolate treat with our smaller products, which will be finished, let's say, after 10 or 20 minutes. And you can take them home. Okay. Well, this sounds like there's absolutely something for every member of the family to do at the Chocolarium. But if they uh, really can't bear to leave, I believe that there's somewhere quite special that they can spend the night. Can you tell us about that? <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, we have a partner, is uh, the Hotel Sentis Park, located just outside of St. Gallen. And in that cooperation, we created two chocolate rooms there. So these are two rooms for luck, and they are styled um, with one. One of the rooms is more, let's say, more for adults with uh, with brown and goldy, nice chocolate tones, and the other one for the children is in a playful, casual setting. The mini bar is filled with chocolate treats, so um, don't go there if you don't want your kids to eat chocolate all night. So this is really the um, Whatever the question is, the chocolate is always the right answer. That's what comes true in those two chocolate rooms there. And people visiting or staying at the hotel there in those chocolate rooms, they have included in their fares, they have a family ticket for our chocolarium and includes also the, the decorating of their own chocolate bar. Now, Caroline, you mentioned earlier that um, the Chocolarium is now just uh, 20 minutes from St. Gallen. Uh, mm -hmm. If people don't have a car, can they can they access the Chocolarium via public transport? Absolutely, yes. Um, you can come along by train either from Zurich or from Munich or St. Gallen. And there is a train station here in Flawil, and we do have a post bus with our own Maestrani stop. So there's no problem finding us with public transport. Also, you could uh, hop off the train in the, at the main station in Flavil and actually walk along the so-called Schocke Weg, which means uh, like it's a chalky trail, chocolate trail, and it takes you like 30 to 40 minutes walking through fields all the way because our Chocolarium is beautifully located in the middle of green fields and uh, there's... Of, course, in summer, we have cows around us. So it's a really nice place to go also with the children and stroll around outside. 
Hmm. Well, it sounds like the um, Shockey Trail might be the best thing to do after you've visited the Shockalaria. <laughs> walk, I can, walk back to I can recommend that. Yeah, walk back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's lovely. Now, is the um, Chocolate Factory of Happiness open all year round? We are open all year round. We have closed on Mondays and, of course, on some of the bank holidays. So always best to, to check our website. Okay. And for people that are planning to visit, do they need to purchase tickets in advance and, and where can they get them? Yes, absolutely. We really strongly commend, uh, recommend to buy tickets in advance especially during the, the, the school holidays in Switzerland, and uh, buy them on our website. It's uh, chocolarium.ch because we have slots to get in. Um, so there's always like 30 people can enter our cinema every 10 minutes. That gives us the opportunity that, uh, to, to make sure that the, the museum part is never crowded. So people get in every 10 minutes and they move forwards, and so there's always enough space for everybody to to walk around and enjoy uh, our information. Wonderful. Well, thank you for sharing all that with us. It um, certainly sounds like there's something for everybody to uh, to see and, and do, and I'm sure everyone listening who uh, is planning to visit the Chocolarium will be uh, in for a, a wonderful experience. <laughs> I do hope so. And uh, we are very much looking forward to welcoming all the tourists back also. We are ready for you and uh, and hope things stay as good as they are at the moment. Looking forward to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ooh, spending a night in a chocolate-themed hotel room after a day filled with chocolate tastings and workshops at Chocolarium would definitely be a highlight of a visit to Switzerland. Are you as tempted as I am? You can't spend the night at our next chocolatey destination, but you certainly won't leave disappointed. The Lindt Home of Chocolate promises a day out you won't forget. After all, with the world's biggest chocolate fountain there to greet you on arrival, how could you possibly not have a great time? But that's not all there is to see and do at Lindt Home of Chocolate just outside of Zurich, as we're about to find out from Kai. Welcome to the podcast, Kai. It's great to have you here and I'm really excited to learn more about what sounds like a chocolate lover's paradise, the Lindt home of chocolate. Yes. Hello, everybody. Pleasure to talk to you. I'm sure most of our listeners have heard of Lindt as it's one of the most famous chocolate brands in the world. So can you just give us a brief history of where and when the company began? Yeah. So Lindt has a 175 years of chocolate making history. It all started 1845 here in Zurich, Switzerland, with a small confectionery. Um, later then in 18, I do a very quick summary of the long history. Um, later then in 1879, um, Rodolf Lindt in Bern, he invented the conch, which helped chocolate uh, to become very smooth and this, the melting, soft melting texture. And then uh, these two gentlemen, uh, the Sprüngli from Zurich and Lind from Bern, they met in 1899 and founded a company together and started producing chocolate here in Kilchberg, where we are still today, uh, in 1899 with a big factory. So it's 175 years of history. And since then, you name it, we invented Lindor, uh, the Gold Bonnies, uh, the Excellence Chocolate. So there's quite a few delicacies uh, available today. Another company that was founded in 2013 as an independent foundation, which is called the Lindt Chocolate Competence Foundation. And this is where I am the managing director of. Um, of course, we carry Lindt in our name because Lindt was the founder of our uh, foundation. But uh, we are an independent company and our goal is to run the museum, to give back to the people everything we know about the history and the tradition of this uh, Swiss identification product, which is chocolate. So our purpose is to have as many people learn about chocolate um, in general, not only Lindt. Uh, and for this purpose, we built a museum here in Kirchberg. Mm, fantastic. Now, I was lucky enough to go to the former building in Kirchberg um, a few years ago when it was really just a, a store, but boy, was it it was a great experience seeing all those Lindt chocolates and I might have 
tasted a few. Uh, but in 2020, you opened the brand new Lint Home of Chocolate, which is a complete interactive experience for visitors. So could you tell us about that and, and what are some of the things that people can see and do when they go to the Lint Home of Chocolate? Yes, certainly. Um, glad, glad to talk about this. It's, as you say, it's a brand new building. It's a purpose-built building for the museum. Uh, it was designed by very famous Swiss architects. Uh, from the outside, um, you only see a big brick wall, which helps the building to integrate perfectly into the existing company uh, um, uh, factory buildings here on, on site. And um, inside, it's a lot of concrete, but it's very bright, very like a cathedral. You don't expect that when you come in. So you're blown away for the first time from the architecture by Christ and Gantenbein. Then, of course, in the in the lobby, we have uh, the free the, the tallest freestanding chocolate fountain in the world. It's nine point three meters high. Uh, you use meters as well, the metric system, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I, I wouldn't know. It's thirty feet approximately, <laughs> and um, in there we have more than a ton of real chocolate, which is flowing, and it gives a smell, a scent, uh, a flavor to the entire building. Of course, uh, so you definitely know where you are. Mm. And, uh, then uh, in the ground floor, we have the largest lint shop of the world, which has more than 500 square meters. And uh, I think it's more than 600 different products, um, all made by lint. We have a cafe where you can um, especially drink after your visit because chocolate, if you eat a lot, makes you thirsty. But we also have salty and other sweet delicacies there. And then the main purpose of the building is in the first floor. It's our museum. We have seven uh areas in the museum so you learn everything about where cocoa comes from about the cultivation we have a, a plantation in there um you, you learn about chocolate history the chocolate history is more than 5000 years old it's all started in central america mesoamerica and how the mayans and the aztecs who created the words chocolate um and the chocolate was consumed liquid at the time and what it took to become um known throughout the world uh, how this process went on over the last 5,000 years. And we also answer the question why Switzerland is so famous for chocolate, although we don't grow cocoa beans. But um, there's another famous ingredient, a very important ingredient in the most consumed uh, chocolate br uh, um, flavor today, which is milk chocolate. So maybe this is where the bell starts ringing, <laughs> cowbell maybe, um, and there's plenty of good milk in Switzerland and uh, at the time. Today, you have the Silicon Valley in the U.S., and uh, around 1850, there was kind of a chocolate valley in the French part of Switzerland where you had Cahier, you had Lindt in Bern, which is not far away, and other uh, manufacturers, Nestlé, uh, Peter, who, in, who, who all worked on how to optimize chocolate and made many inventions, uh, like, for example, also the zipper and the aluminum foil were invented in Switzerland around that time, so there were, were many pioneers working. It was a very vivid time. Um, yeah, then you, of course, uh, see a, a production process. We have a, a, a pilot plant where we do research, but also a show production. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the tour is available in uh, six languages. We have an audio guide, which is included in the price. It's 15 Swiss francs. But you can also book a guided tour with a guide, which then takes an hour and a half and is 28. Uh, that's public. You can book tickets online. And, uh, yeah, we recommend that because especially during vacation times and on weekends, we are mostly fully booked. We, I say, still have limitations for uh, corona uh, with capacities, but uh, we are very optimistic this, that this will all um, be, uh, the, this, this limitation will be uh, lifted soon. I hope this is correct. <laughs> and um, that we can uh, welcome many more visitors also from around the world. Okay. So I also believe that you can do workshops and, and learn how to make chocolate at the Lint Home of, Home of Chocolate. You are a very good listener. I forgot that point. <laughs> we have in the second floor, we have the Chocolateria. Yes, and you would definitely miss something if you wouldn't visit that. Uh, the Chocolateria is in our second floor um, where you can uh, do your own chocolate together with a real maître chocolatier, uh, master chocolatier. Um, and uh, the classes can also be booked online. Uh, there are several classes per day, and uh, you can do either your own bar of chocolate or pralines, or uh, towards Easter and Christmas, we have, of course, those very famous hollow shapes that you can do. And, uh, yeah, that's definitely one hour of pure delight, yeah. Mm, I bet. And are they suitable for children or only for adults? 
Um, we say uh, as soon as the kids go to school, they're fit to visit us because uh, especially in the chocolateria, you need a certain height so you can see on the working table and you need a certain um, uh, capacity also to work f uh, with your fingers. And if the kids are like two, three years old, they are too young. But if they are six and older, I think that's a good age then to start visiting. Okay. And for those people that come to the museum, um, can they try before they buy? Absolutely. Yeah. You can try different uh, – in the museum tour, we can uh, – we you can taste uh, liquid chocolate, milk, white, and dark chocolate. Uh, we have a, a tasting um, machine, which we call Clack Clack. It's touchless. You just hold your hand, and it drops a piece of chocolate. And what you need to do is you need to taste what flavor it is. It's a kind of a game. And then uh, the, the next room is called Chocolate Heaven, which is where you have a – we initially wanted to give pralines, but um, because there's such a nice variety, but there's another nice variety in Lindor uh, chocolate balls, and they are individually wrapped, so it's more hygienic for Corona mm -hmm. reasons. And um, yeah, but uh, there's eight different brands of uh, kinds of uh, Lindor that you can taste, and uh, yeah, and then you can decide what you want to buy in the shop. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> sounds wonderful. Uh, is the Lindholm of chocolate open all year round? Yes. We have a few days where we are closed. Uh, this is uh, December 25, 26, and the 1st of January. And then we have in spring and in fall, we have a maintenance day where we are closed. So we are open 360 days. Okay. And you mentioned before that it's best for people to buy tickets online. Mm -hmm. So should they do that a couple of days before or even further ahead than that? No, a couple of days is fine. Yeah, yeah. We have half hour time slots to spread the visitors well throughout the day. And then if you want to visit in the morning, we open at 10. Last entry is at 5. So you have plenty of time slots to choose from. If you want to visit a guided tour or a chocolateria class, since there are only maybe two or four per day, this may be recommendable to buy a bit in, more in advance. But if you buy three three days in advance, you should be able to get tickets. Okay, great. And for those visitors who are staying in Zurich or are in Switzerland and, and don't have their own transport, how mm -hmm. can they get to the home of chocolate by public transport? Oh, very well. You can definitely you can actually choose how you want to get here. Uh, besides our parking lot, uh, parking garage, um, you can reach us by a uh, um, train. There's a train station five walking minutes from here, which connects Zurich within 10, 15 minutes. Uh, we have a bus which leaves from Bellevue, which is a Birkeplatz, which is a very uh, nice location also in the city center, a 15 minute bus ride, or you can come here by boat. Uh, we have also, we are, there's a short round trip on the lake and uh, the first, uh, the second stop is Kitzberg. So you can uh, reach us here or even nicer if after your visit, you take the boat back to Zurich and you, you approach the city from the water after your nice chocolate experience. That's perfect roundup of your visit. Mm, that sounds like the perfect day out. Well, thank you for sharing all that with us. It's um, approaching Easter when this episode goes to, to air mm -hmm. and I know what will be waiting for me on Easter morning and that'll be a nice lint gold bunny. Uh, my husband knows that's the only thing to buy me for Easter every year. So um, I'm looking forward to that already. Great. Thank you, Kai. And, yeah, hopefully I'll be heading your way and, and calling in and, and trying out all those experiences at the Lindholm of Chocolate myself very soon. Thank you for the chance to talk to you. And uh, everyone listening, we are welcoming you. We are waiting for many, many more people to come and, and have a wonderful day here. With Easter just around the corner, no doubt you have chocolate on your mind. And it really should be on your mind when you're planning a trip to Switzerland too. Why not include a visit to at least one, or even better all, of the chocolate destinations we've heard about today when you visit Switzerland? I'm definitely going to be tasting my way around Switzerland as soon as possible. I'll include links to Funky Chocolate Club, Chocolarium and Lint Home of Chocolate websites in the show notes for this episode, so you can pre-book your tickets and find out more information. And if hearing all about these amazing Swiss chocolate experiences has got your mouth watering and you'd love to join a workshop or a tour when you visit Switzerland, make sure you grab a copy of my Swiss chocolate lovers map. There's a link to get your free copy in the show notes too. And you can find the show notes at holidaystoswitzerland.com forward slash episode 43. 
Thank you very much for listening. Take care and enjoy your chocolate. Bye for now. If you'd like more great resources to help you plan your dream trip to Switzerland, there are lots of ways to connect with us. Visit our website, holidaystoswitzerland.com, sign up for our monthly newsletter, or join our friendly, helpful community of past and future travellers in our Switzerland travel planning group. You'll also find the links to connect with us in the show notes for this episode. Show notes and a list of all previous episodes are available at holidaystoswitzerland.com slash podcast. Don't miss out on your fortnightly dose of Swiss travel inspo. Hit the subscribe button on your favorite podcast app so you never miss an episode. And if you enjoyed the show, please leave a rating. That's all for this edition of the Holidays to Switzerland Travel Podcast. Thanks for joining us and happy travel planning.